Okay, everyone, this is an example of what you can make with this project. I am going to illustrate on how to make something like this, and I want you to take this concept and run with it and make your own version of this utilizing different materials. I'm going to show you how to get those materials, and I'm going to break this uh, whole thing down for you right now. Hey y'all, it's Mr. White, and I'm back from the dead. Or maybe I just went on a vacation down in Club Med. I can think you can tell that the Club Med part is a lie, because my voice is very fry. So, I'm about to introduce to you a new tutorial, and all of you need to do this and do a screen shot of this of your progress that you make today on the tutorial. You will have until Tuesday of next week to finish this project. I want to see amazing work. I want to show people this work so they know how amazing you are. Be cool. Thanks for waving at me on the cameras. Take care of yourself. Stay out of the studio, be nice to the substitutes, have a good one, goodbye. P.S. Don't get the flu. It sucks. Alright, I know for a fact that some of you have been wanting to learn how to do something just like you're seeing on the screen in front of you. Today we are going to cover that and this is just the beginning so here we go All right, so go to images.google.com, do a search for what you want. So say I'm searching for the flying spaghetti monster. I search for him, I'm gonna to go to tools, I'm gonna to go to sizes larger than 1024 by 768. I'm gonna get a transparent background. Um, looks like it's taken a minute to pull up. And once it does, I find this monster on a wiki page, which means I can use it. Uh, you guys can use anything for this project as long as you do not try to make money off of this. This is just a project for high schoolers, so you got a little bit more leeway within uh, this project. Uh, don't use any logos or anything like that, but you can use uh, different types of images of celebrities or what have you. All right, so anyways, I added an images folder and I put my monster in there. I also made a video folder and I'm also going to make an audio folder uh, just so I can have everything in one place and that's inside my combo fun folder. All right, so I am going to head back to Final Cut. I'm going to make certain that I have a new project titled combo fun. That's the name of this project. Uh, and this one's an example for you. For you guys, just put combo fun. Okay. So um, I've added a cityscape here and the very first thing I'm going to do with the cityscape is I'm going to mask it just like we did inside a sky mask tutorial. So what I want you to do is uh, you'd go to your draw mask, put that on top, and now I'm going to trace the city. You... All right, time to draw the mask. Okay, I made that title a little long. All right, so just like we did in Sky Mask, what we are going to do is, I sped this up obviously, I am going to trace the city. I'm going to trace it to the best of my ability. I'm going around each and every one of these buildings, going as fast as I possibly can, and uh, still keeping it looking amazing. So uh, going through, getting all these nooks and crannies, up and down, all around the city. Remember, I'm using that little square a rectangle thing in the corner to navigate through my um, uh, image here. This image is actually longer than my movie uh, canvas that we're working inside of. That is so I can uh, actually animate this city across the canvas. All right, so still drawing my mask. 
moving through this as quickly as I possibly can. You all know how long this takes. All right, so still going, still going. Okay, remember you have to be patient. The results at the end of this are always so beautiful. Take your time. If you're doing a good job, I always give you more time on these projects. You just have to show me that you are producing quality work. All right, so we're almost done with this draw mask. Zoomed out so I could see a little bit more, see where I am at. All right, I'm getting to the end of the cityscape. This thing was epic. Uh, all right. Yep, that's right. Made a little note to myself. I'm still drawing my mask more. Woo, this is taking forever. Okay, getting close to the end of this one. All right, okay. Now remember, we go outside of our canvas, click from our last point, and then we go over to the left, and I click another one, and now I take my last point and I connect it to my first point, which is when my mask is created. So we're gonna do that now. And come on. Are you gonna click this? Or we just okay, connection's been made. Okay, now we have to invert the selection. That is true. Then selection has been inverted. Yay! Okay. So now that that has been done, we have made our mask of our city. The next part of what we're going to do is I'm actually going to make a sub clip of this mask. The reason I'm going to do this is because I just kind of want to hide the mask part of it. I don't want to have access to accidentally changing some of the points around the mask. So I'm going to control click on my um, uh, actual video file here on the timeline and I am going to turn that into a compound clip. And guess what I'm going to call that? I will call that a city mask. Sorry that came a little off the screen. All right, time to animate the city with keyframes. All right, so all I'm doing here is I'm going to go to the very beginning uh, of this clip. Remember these Im still images can be as long as you want them to be. I'm going to go to the very beginning and end and I'm going to set my keyframes and get the city lined up the way in which I want it to be. And basically what I'm doing is I'm kind of like, I don't know if you've ever seen Fred Flintstone cartoons when he's running and the background's moving. Well, I'm actually moving the, the city as opposed to moving the subject that I'm going to put behind the city, which is the flying spaghetti monster. So I animated the city. It's been, it looks good. It, and now we're moving on to our next part. Here comes the monster. Alrighty, you had a little break there. Okay, so now I'm bringing in my flying spaghetti monster. I am going to first drop him in front of the city, realize I don't want to do that. I'm going to put him behind. Oh, look, there he is. But he's going the wrong way as the city's moving one way and he's facing away from it. Looks a little awkward. So what we're going to do is I'm going to flip him around. So uh, let me line this up a little bit. And I'm going to stretch this, pull him out so he's about the same uh, distance or size on the timeline as the cityscape. Now I have that going on. And okay, everything looks good. I like the way that that's flowing, but I want to change his direction. So I am going to go to transform and I'm going to just grab this and I'm going to grab the ends here and flip him the other way just by grabbing the middle point on that rectangle. As you can see on the right hand side you see the information change with it. That is our information palette. You all know that. Okay now I'm getting them all set up and I am going to begin to create some animations. Alright. That looks pretty good. So now I'm going to click my uh, keyframe for my horizontal and vertical and I will also be having my uh, utilizing, I'll be utilizing the Y a lot in this. So he kind of bobs up and down as he's moving through the city. And I'll be utilizing X to kind of speed him up as the city scrolls past him. Remember the city is um, animated. So it actually scrolling past him, that sort of Fred Flintstone look that if you ever watch those old cartoons where the background just keeps staying the same. Um, I just have the city, as you know, moving past him in front, as a, and I'm also, as you can see here, animating the creature utilizing keyframes. So he's moving through the city, I'm moving him up and down, 
and now it kind of looks like he's terrorizing this town so let's see how this plays out yeah that's looking pretty cool so if I had a lot more time I would probably show you guys how to animate his appendages and all those types of things but since we do not have the luxury of time today uh, we will deal with that at a different point plus it'd be very overwhelming so you see it looks pretty cool moving through the cityscape you can see over on the right hand side my information palette where that the keyframes were animated all right we need more let's find a jet or three and you learn how to edit with preview which is a program here on our Mac okay so we're going to search the internet for large jet.png files with no background. I talked to you about this at the beginning of this thing. And so basically I sped this up. I'm just downloading a bunch of PNG files. And I'm saving them inside my movies folder, inside my images, inside my movies folder. All right. Here they are. I'm naming them properly because I don't want to get confused. So if you double click any image in uh, your Mac, it'll open it up inside your preview. Uh, once you open it up, you can do a few things with it in preview, including select portions of it just by clicking and dragging across, which is what I did. I selected a portion, I hit Command C, and then I went up top and I went File to New, Paste, uh, and then I made a new version of this, which I am now saving inside my images folder. All right. Sweet. Now I'm doing the same with all of these. As you see, I'm going through, selecting the pieces. I'm going to, I'm hitting Command C on my keyboard, and then I'm going to go New from Clipboard. So I hit Copy, and now I'm going to New from Clipboard, and it paste and makes a new thing. Uh, then I can go and save this. So when I say new thing, you know I'm talking about a new jet. I just selected the portion that I wanted, which is the jet shot from the horizontal section. And here I am doing again, going file to copy, file to new, new from clipboard, and then I go file, save. And then I save that into my images folder inside my movies folder, Word. So that's preview, very quick to the point. It's super simple program, it's built in all Macs. I hope that you find this to be useful because you guys don't have Photoshop yet. All right. Now we're moving on to keyframes on the X and Y axis. I sped this part up because you know how to do this by now, so just watch. Okay, so I'm adding the jets to my, uh, pro uh, to my uh, project. And so I'm sizing them down and I'm getting them lined up the way in which I want. And utilizing X and Y axis, just like we've done a million times and setting up my keyframes, you know, making those diamonds white, as I'm always telling you, uh, go ahead and get everything in order the way in which I want and you see I'm beginning to animate these jets so they fly across the screen so here we go sizing this one down too and you see I'm getting this one sped up as well this was uh, sped up about 500% so you can see that um, these jets are beginning to fly across and you could reference the original image if you don't know what I'm talking about. See, I'm speeding it up a little bit more. You know how to do all that. And now we add the sky, just like sky mask tutorial. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go back to the sky mask tutorial. Okay, so um, I had this really cool shot of the desert uh, night sky time lapse. And I'm gonna put that in the back, but it's much shorter than the rest of the video so I'm just going to copy and paste it a few times and when I copy and paste it what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to copy it and then I uh, going to I'm realizing I'm moving some stuff around here I need to get this below my flying spaghetti monster so give me one second as I do that but first I think I'm going to reverse this clip which is a good idea all right, let's get all this reversed. Select those pieces out. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to paste them again. That's exactly where they should be. I'm making a mistake here because I'm tired. So what I'm going to do is put this guy behind the city. I even told myself, oh, Chris, what were you doing? All right, I'm going to select all these. I'm going to pull them down below the, the flying spaghetti monster. Everything Layers are key to everything that we do inside of Final Cut. In fact, every program that you're going to use on your Mac uh, for animation and Photoshop 
layers are a big deal. All right, so I'm gonna make a compound clip out of these just so I can join them together. And then I can copy and paste them a little bit easier too. So I just made a whole bunch of copies of the sky. You can see the very end of it. Now, um, check this out. Let me get all this lined up how I want. It's starting to look pretty cool. And this is just something I, I threw together very quickly, as you know, because you have watched me make this. All right, now I have my jets flying by. I have the sky back behind me. It's moving kind of slow. I'm going to speed this up in the final version. You'll see that. And this is basic. This is it. Essentially, uh, what I want you guys to do is I want you to put together something utilizing these methods. This is just almost everything that we've learned about already um, from the other projects, just all combined together. I want you to begin this today, and I want you to send me proof of your work, as I referenced before. I um, hope you find this project to be fun. I think it's interesting, and looks like this is looking pretty cool. And that's it. I will go over this again in class. Watch this video a couple times if you're not getting it, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Bye.